Hi, Tanner. Hi, Finn. Oh. <laughs> well, welcome back to what is the beginning of my channels, my disaster pool series. All right, Tanner. Now, for those of you who uh, have been with me from the beginning, come on, Tanner. You know I made a number of videos about repairing my pool. And I'm very happy to tell you there's still nothing wrong with the pool. It's beautiful as always. The broken pipe underneath the deck right there hasn't leaked or had any problems anymore. And the conversion from a salt cell to just a straight chlorine has been the best thing I ever did on this pool. But I brought you guys back to the side of the beginning of the channel because in between changing out the salt cell to chlorine and repairing the broken uh, pipe on my pool, I did do a video about my solar array. And that was a fun, if not death defined video in which I had to get on top of my roof very carefully. But for those of you that have been with the channel for a long period of time or have dug deeply into the uh, old videos, you'll know that I do have a solar array on the roof of my house. It's been a number of years since I've been up here. In fact, you guys know when I was up here last, I was installing the uh, grates to keep pigeons from living underneath my solar panels. And from what I can tell, this has worked out and held up very well. Now, this is about a 6,000 watt solar array that I've had installed since about 2009 which isn't completely true because these last three panels I added in I think about 2014 or 15 but look at no pigeons underneath there anymore we solved that problem and then for those who are watching this that have not been around quite so long to save the hassle of having to dig through the archives to find those videos i will put links in the description okay but thank you for everybody that has been sticking with me from the beginning this channel's changed a lot now i'm not just taking a stroll down memory lane for fun even though it is a little bit of fun it's uh because i want to try to explain what we're going to be doing in the next few months and how we got here and how this channel hasn't always been solely focused on rvs now, a few months ago, I was able to take everybody on a tour of the Blue Eddy uh, corporate headquarters there in Chino Hill, California, where we took a look at the uh, newly released EP800 UPS solar generator power backup system. Okay, okay. Now, after explaining, to, now after explaining to them about my 6,000 watt solar array that I have on my house, stop. They were very interested in working with me on installing and testing out the EP800 at my house. But it's because I've had this installed for such a long time that Blue Eddy was interested because I have over a decade's worth of uh, data and information about my power use in the same exact house. And so they sent me an EP800 in box, well, I guess in multiple boxes to try the system out. So what we're gonna do is install the EP800 in my garage here so we can check it in real world applications. And not just some static studio, tabletop, or uh, laboratory situations. So in today's video, we're gonna just unbox this and explain how the system's working and how it's supposed to work. Why there's so many damn boxes. And how I'm gonna utilize this system, even though I already have an existing 6,000 watt solar array on the roof. Now this is a Sunny Boy 6000 uh, grid tied inverter system on here. So there's no battery backup on the existing system whatsoever. The solar DC wiring comes all the way down the conduit here and into the side of my house, straight in the junction box right here. Now this was installed by Sun Valley Solar in conjunction with my utility company SRP Salt River project here in the Phoenix area so please understand I had nothing to do with the installation here so the DC wiring comes back through here goes up to the inverter the inverter turns it into 110 power comes back down here through a disconnect over here through 110 power and uh, back through this conduit through the second meter and then another disconnect so that utility can disconnect there if they do have to work on the power lines because after this point all it does is go right back down into my electrical box right here and back feeds almost like a parallel system 
to my uh, breaker box here. And if I'm not using any power, then it goes back through the meter here and out to my neighbors. I'm just as interested as you guys into how to incorporate the Blue Eddy EP800 with an existing solar system. Now, before we go any further, because I'm sure everybody's curious, it is about noon uh, on the 1st of December. Uh, so right now we're putting out, what is that, 3,900 watts to the grid. And the total this inverter's put out is about 71 megawatt hours. Yeah, it's hard to see. I can tap on it. I guess that wakes it up. I do have access to all that information. I never look at it. I do not care that much about numbers other than if it's working or if it's not working. I have the numbers right here if I ever want to look at it. All right, so with all that out of the way, for those of you who didn't watch the previous video, you might be asking, what is the EP800? This is Blue Eddy's answer to a modular out of the box power system that's not only a solar charge controller, power backup, UPS or an uninterrupted power supply, or it can also be used as an emergency power backup generator. So if your house was to lose power or the city were to lose power, you wouldn't have to get a propane or gas or diesel generator to power up your house. Basically, it's an electrical power grid in a box. But they're very heavy boxes. And it's a modular system. And the most important one is right here. This is the actual EP800. You can see right here, standard Blue Eddy, you get a bag of cables, a bag of other things. We'll open these later. All right, it looks like these are gonna be the end caps. And then there's the unit right there. Let me grab it and get all four of them out. All right, yeah, that's pretty. Got all the uh, connection points on that side and even the awesome power switch right there. Probably shouldn't do that yet. There are no batteries in this, so this is not all self-contained in one unit. You have to have this as the primary controller unit with the inverter, the charge controller, and the brains of the system. You need the additional batteries right here to act as a battery backup, battery power storage, or even that UPS system we're talking about. So you will need the EP800 and some battery modules too to have a complete system. Now I'm gonna risk back and limb to lift this up myself, but I can tell you it is very heavy. Go ahead and tear right there. So this should be a two person lift, but it does have some pretty useful handles built into it. Now keep in mind, I did move all this into the garage, so I knew I could lift it up. Uh, looks like it's 48 kilograms or 106 pounds. 48 kilograms seems a lot less impressive than 106 pounds. That's, that's a big guy right there. Now we'll go ahead and unbox one of the batteries here. Now Blue Eddy does have a number of uh, modular batteries for like the AC 300, 200, 500, but those are not compatible with the EP 800 or the EP series line. These are called the B 500. So they only work with the EP series. So we'll do the same thing with opening it. All right, so there's the uh, covers for the side of the battery. And while the module might look very similar to the EP800, it's just it's designed to look very similar. It's much shorter. Now I'm going to go ahead and risk uh, my back and limb again. But we're only going to lift up one of these because we only have to look at one of them, okay? I have it at 56 kilos or 124 pounds. So this is a lithium iron phosphate battery. You have the connections on it right back there. Even has a built-in circuit protection built into it. That's why this is a, a really interesting system right here. Everything's already built into it. Unlike a lot of the uh, do-it-yourself uh, uh, battery rack and uh, inverter setups with charge controllers, everything's built into this. It's pretty much plug and play. The only thing that's going to be difficult is where it uh, interacts with the house. That's where you have to make the decision. Arguably, underneath right here is the next important thing. 
I say that somewhat sarcastically. This is the bracket that everything's going to sit on. Yeah, B500 and the EP800 are not weatherproof. They need to be kept outside of someplace uh, dry and out of the sun. Uh, so if you don't have room in a garage, you might have to get a shed to put it in. I think that even Blue Eddie has a, an enclosure that you can put this inside of if you have to put it outside the house. But while they call it a bracket, I would call it a pedestal. This is what everything's going to stack on top of. It does have these pretty adjustable feet on it. They're very wide. And I think, let me get my test equipment out. That is steel. Okay. All right, we'll tear that. And about 10 kilograms or 22 pounds. So that's pretty substantial too. Now, as I put this back down again, you'll notice there's some detents right here. If you look on top of the, the batteries, there's some detents right there and even more right there because these are all designed with feet on the bottom of them that will nest into the unit that will be stacked on top of it. So let me just uh, set up a few real fast and it'll show you how we're going to mock this thing up. If my back holds up. All right, so I do have uh, two batteries stacked on, on the bottom with the EP800 at top. You can see the EP800 and the B500 down below. Now, each battery module is about 5,000 watt hours or 5 kilowatt hours. So with the two of them together, that's 10 kilowatt hours or 10,000 watt hours. I did already cheat and go through the uh, packet right there. It comes with four of these uh, mounts. I won't be installing them right now, but on the side of the battery right here, these brackets line up right over to there. But then it also comes with its uh, mate, has that threaded uh, stud on it already. So you would be able to bolt it on to the battery and then bolt the battery against the wall there so it can't tip over very easily. I'm not installing the battery yet, so we won't be putting these on, but each battery does come with two sets of these. After all, right there, we're already at 350 pounds standing upright and however many kilograms that is. So on the side of the EP800, you do have the PV input, so PV1 and then PV2. So the MC4 connectors would go straight from the array into here. It has two MPPT charge controllers built into it, uh, but because I already have solar, I won't be using this at all. I think it's rated for 9,000 watts and 2,000 watts, somewhere around there, as they explained to me. I already gave all that information in the previous video, so I won't try to do too many numbers on this one because one, I'll get it wrong. Two, numbers, like I said, they just don't interest me that much. But if you want to find out what the uh, charge controller can handle, I would recommend you go ahead and check with uh, that video or with uh, Blue Eddy for the information. This is the master on switch, and this is where uh, our battery is going to be hooked up to. Down below, this is going to be the batteries or overcurrent protection built into it. You don't have to worry about adding circuit breakers or overcurrent protection on it. It already has the ports on the side and the cables that come with this in order to link all the batteries together. I can grab the bags here. And when I dump it out, you can see it already has the cables already pre-cut with ends on them. So we already have a negative and positive cable and the communication cable already designed to link up to the next one. So you don't have to worry about making your own battery cables to connect everything together. It's already done that work for you. And they're even nicer because they're quick connects. You just squeeze the, the buttons right there and it's connected. The communication is very important so that this module knows what's going to that module and then the uh, EP800 can connect to all of it and know the state of charge for all the batteries, keep everything balanced out. The last cable they give you is a grounding strap cable. It'll go on the other side right over here to ground one module to another module. Now the top of the box that I ripped off and I didn't show you guys, these are the side panels just to make a, an even a cleaner installation. Once you have uh, the whole battery system wired up and the way you want it to be, these would just go ahead and stick on right there, protecting all the cables from any damage. It's a very slick system. It's actually pretty. There's a uh, on-off button for the battery module itself. 
I doubt that it's gonna work until I have everything wired up. But the other side has an equally easy one that just goes over here. It doesn't really snap on, there's screws that will put it into place, but again, that's after the installation is done. We can take a look at the EP800 now. On this side, uh, there's a USB connection. I thought that was interesting. You can put a thumb drive in there for programming and updating. I don't believe we'll be using these over here. We'll get to the owner's manual. Even though the whole unit is sitting right there, we are still missing one vital key point, and that's where the uh, power comes in and goes out. The last box we need to open up today is going to be from Reliance Control. This is going to be our sub panel and our disconnect. Now, even though Reliance makes this, they are working in conjunction with Lou Eddy's designs. So a sub panel is just like a normal main breaker box, but it's a sub assembly and it comes after the main breaker box. And this is where it's gonna be confusing for me and for everybody else. And you can see it looks just like a normal breaker box, except the main power coming in is a little bit complicated. They have generator supply and unit supply. This is where it starts turning into an RV for me because this is basically a manual transfer switch. The breakers right here have been uh, bonded together basically. So if one breaker is off, on, it turns the other one off. If I turn this one on, it turns the other one off. So there's no way both of those can be at the on at the same time. That's very important because they've labeled this generator supply and utility supply. Utility supply is gonna be coming from the main breaker power here. Well, the generator is gonna be what's coming out from the EP800. This already has a built-in design so that we can't backfeed from the EP800 to the uh, grid itself for uh, worker safety and homeowner safety. Now at this point is where it starts getting a little bit confusing. So the confusing part for me is though, even though I do this all the time on RVs, I am not a licensed electrician, so I can't take this panel off and start rewiring my house, even though I want to. So even though the EP800 is designed to be more of a do-it-yourself or off-grid situations, when it comes to a residential or grid-tied application, you will still need a licensed electrician. So this is where the video is going to have to end for the first part. So I will get with an electrician to design a system that will safely integrate my house with the Blue Eddy EP800. And then on the next installment, I will be showing how this was installed, why the choices were made that were made, uh, how Blue Eddy helped or didn't help, and uh, if I needed to get any permits from my utility, the city, uh, or even my previous solar system installer. And they'll try to explain what decisions were made on how we installed it. And then at the end of that video, hopefully we'll see it fired up and in action. And we'll be able to see how it works. I'm pretty excited to bring you guys along on this journey. It will take a number of videos for sure. But I think that this could really fundamentally change the RV world, the RV park, campground world, cabin world, residential emergency power backup, and storage. So I'm excited on this, and I hope you guys come along with me on this journey. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye. All right, Tanner, come on. I know you're uncomfortable. It's definitely been a while since I've been up here, but that's a beautiful view up there. And for a channel that goes out of its way to tell you how important it is to inspect your roofs, I haven't been up on my roof on my house for years and years and years so i might as well take advantage of that opportunity so that's what came in the top of the box we can take a look